Okay, today we've got what was requested that we do one of these. This is a Planet 2000, which is also available as a LCL communicator NI440DX, the Serpent UK4000, and the Mana Kestrel. The communicator comes in two versions. One has a yellow meter. And I'm absolutely convinced that that's the earlier version and the slightly better version, but I might be totally wrong. I know there's two versions and one works better than the other. Anyway, these always work very well for me, but the receivers aren't easy to set up. So that's the different. They use a double diode um, detect ratio detector instead of a, a clever chip. And the first problem with this I've got is that somebody's taken the square pin power connector out, shoved the fuse in, which is fair enough. There's no grommet in that. So, it looks like I've got to um, see if we've got some of these spare, spare square sockets in stock. And I think we have. Okay, so we've now fitted a nice new square socket onto that. I did have some in stock. And I tapped the holes for M3, so we've used the M3 screws like you get in the side of most sets. I don't know what the original holes were. But luckily they hadn't mashed it up putting their fuse holder and dodgy lead in. We've got new square leads for these. They're the Workman CB2R, because some people seem to think these are hard to come by. And Workman Electronics are an American company. No doubt these are made in China, but uh, there are people in this country, in the UK here, and uh, other places who buy in the Workman range of products. So that's who does them. Incidentally, the red wire I took out of the positive doesn't look capable of holding more than a quarter of an amp so considering these sets are one of the highest consumption UK sets ever they can actually draw two amps they're quite an old-fashioned design for the time and they've got a relay for switching between transmit and receive uh, which is down there and of course can prove to be problematic but then some of the latest sets seem to use relays as well it looks like they've gone backwards um, so the, the st stumbling block with most people on these is lack of information and how to set the VCO and how to set up the receiver. These were produced by Mickey Industries, as in Mickey Mouse, but I'm not for one moment suggesting that it's a Mickey Mouse radio because they work very well. In fact, they work so well that when we were conducting tests with a panel of users in 1982, I had a lot of difficulty getting our test sample back off one of the lady users in Nottingham and in fact I only got my test sample back when I ordered her an identical set from the wholesalers so there you go that must say something because the only time anybody wanted to hold on to one of the samples and some of them they were very glad to give back what we're going to do is start with the VCO of course and on this is a matter of monitoring pin 17 of the LC7137 synthesizer IC. I can't remember whether this is a floating chassis or not a floating chassis. It's a long time since I've done one of these. So I'm just going to check continuity between negative and chassis. I have continuity so it's not a floating chassis. Otherwise you could be struggling with the voltage readings. These days, these prods never seem to want to stay in the holes. Okay. So we've got some monitor pin 17. They're a bit of a jumble of wires, these, you know, they're not the neatest sets. They retailed at 89.99. And the major one was uh, the LCL um, Communicators NI440DX. Yes, it was indeed distributed by LCL. And uh, 
then you know it's also appeared in the other guises. So what I'm now looking for is pin 17 of the IC. Um, so pin one is the bottom left. So we'll just count these round. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 20 pin device. And what I'm looking for is channel 40. It helps if I switch it on, doesn't it? But at least it switches on. And in transmit, oh, we start with receive on this one. Just looking back at my notes here. So I've got my test prod on pin 17. I've got 2.02 volts. In fact, I need 1 volt. And so it's L1 and L1 is the one with the wax in it. Better do it because that's a bit further than I would like. L1 now four, uh, is now set to 4 volts. I'm just going to have a quick look on channel 1. And we've got 2.95, so that's clearly in lock. Now I'll turn my attention to transmit. So now again with the... I'm just trying to prepare myself here. With the radio in transmit, again we're monitoring pin 17. So somehow I've got to hold the transmit button Good grief, it's doing four watts spot on. Put the monitor onto trans uh, into one, two, three, four. And I've got five point two five volts. Now the variable capacitor CT one it's just down there, it's a yellow one. I've got my yellow tool into the yellow component. And what I just need to do is uh, somehow get to... I'll put a rubber band around the transmit button. Once again, we're looking for 4 volts. And that's 3.9, that'll do nicely. I'll unrubber band the microphone. And I'll go to channel 1. And just make sure we're in lock there. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's fine. And I'm going to just let go and go back into receive and just make sure that on channel 40 it hasn't shifted because it can be interactive. One, two, three, four, there we go. It's 3.96, that's excellent. So that's the VCO set. So it's channel 40, monitor pin 17 of the LC7137 synthesizer chip. And in receive, you're looking for 4 volts, and it's adjusting L1. L1's that one. And then in transmit, CT1, which is next to it, the little yellow trimmer. So there we are, we're set on the VCO. Now, I don't think there's anybody else who's going to be able to tell you that one. Right. So we'll now go through with the transmitter tune-up. Now, it's working and it's doing 4 watts.
better select channel 20 we will be in trouble. I'll also switch the Roger Bleep off. So we are exactly on 4 watts and the first transmit coil is L2. Just zoom in a bit. L2 L3 no L7 see this circuit uh, I've got in front of me. It was L3 and the next one's L4. Sometimes a little trick is maximum current on the ammeter on the um, on your power supply because um, sometimes it makes so little difference on the power meter that that is a little trick to um, just make sure you've got peak um, I'll move over to that one. Now, what's that sealed with? Wax. That's all right. Looks like candle wax. I think central and then we've got L6 and then there's the coil there I'm just going to double check these Now we'll see if it's on frequency. So we're on channel 20, so it should be 27.79125. It's 2779041, so it's dropped. As I've said many times before, it's normal for radius to drop with age because the crystal's age. It's um, the CT, whatever that trimmer is there. There's another yellow one by the reference crystal. We are at 79125. So as far as the transmitter goes, as you can see, we did have to adjust the VCO. But it, it wasn't out of lock, but I just wanted it to be right for this demonstration. The transmitter was already doing 4 watts, but it's dropped slightly on frequency, which is to be expected. Because the biggie, as far as I was concerned, is that the, this power arrangement was totally unsatisfactory. And it's quite possible that on transmit, with the very thin wire... Uh, running in that arrangement, it was quite possible that I was becoming resistive and perhaps the radio wasn't doing the power it should have done. But of course we don't know whether it receives yet and they can be quite interesting to set up. I don't have a, um, a sweep generator on this bench and our sweep generator is in the other workshop in another building so I can never demonstrate that. We're going to have a pile of great GT858s and GT868s soon which I'm going to have to do on this set up and you're going to be fed up of seeing different GT858s and 868s but of course that will also bring in the Fidelity 3000 base which I know some of you do want to see um, how we do the sweep generator bit on that so I don't, I never know because we don't have a full manual we've got enough man, enough information to get by with these radios but um, I don't know whether they intended you to set up the um, some bits of the receiver with the sweep generator because it is quite an unusual design and it's quite an obsolete design even when it was designed uh, or made. So 
what else do we have to do? Well, we need to check that low power is low power. So we'll switch the radio to the low power setting. It's that switch on the back. And it should be now doing 0 0.4 of a watt. It's actually doing 0 0.1 of a watt. And so we need to adjust the low power. And the low power is the preset at the back there. It's vertically mounted. So I'll just make sure that's set right. I'll get that tool into it. I'm telling you the wrong one, I'm doing power meter adjust. So what we'll do, we'll just put it back to full power. And I'll just set, set the meter with that one for the, for the correct uh, reading. And that is VR2. Sorry about that. So that's meter adjust is VR2 there at the back. Now, what I was trying to do is to set the low power. And strangely, it's just here. So I'll switch to low power. And that's now 0.4 a watt. I don't know why people fiddle with these. I mean, what? That's how it's supposed to be. Why would you want 0.1 of a watt? Um, a deviation. It's VR2. Deviation is just there. So I'll get my little oscillator out. That looks a bit over the top to me. I'll just switch the camera on, then you can see the right hand oscilloscope. So we'll just turn that down. That's now two and a half. And then we'll give it the whistle test just to see whether that's about how it should be. <whistles> Actually, it needs to be up a fraction. Wallo, that's it. Testing one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. And with the Roger bleep. So that's the transmitter setup. So I'll stop this video and we'll do another one for the receiver.